All right, let me ask you a question. How do you increase your quality of life and spend zero dollars in the process? I'll tell you how, and that is squats. Squatting is the spice of life, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to assess and correct your squat from the knee down so that you can train your muscles and your joints to move pain-free, the way your body was designed to move. Let's get into it. If you've watched any of our videos, you know that we have to start off with a litmus test, and today we're gonna do a squat sit. So I've gotten down there to the bottom of my squat, and what I'm doing is I'm looking around for tight spots or maybe muscles that aren't working the way that it's supposed to work so that we can really get a feel for what's holding us back from moving better. So go ahead and get into your squat sit and find out what's moving well and what's not. Hopefully you got some good information from your body. We're gonna start off by smashing out our foot. This is called a foot smash. So like I said, we're just going to correct your squat from the knee down and we're gonna start at the bottom of your foot and literally all you're gonna do is put that lacrosse ball, baseball, racquetball, whatever you have laying around and you're just going to put as much weight on the arch of your foot as possible. So if this area of your foot is too tight, it's going to prevent you from being able to hold what's called a short foot, which we're gonna get into in a little bit. So go ahead and do two minutes on each foot. Pause the video. Right, I'm sure that foot smash felt magical. Let's go ahead and move up our leg and we're going to do a calf smash. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you several ways how to do this because one of these is gonna resonate with you. And by resonate, I mean feel really intense. And that's the one that you wanna hang out with because we're going for acute discomfort for chronic relief. The more you can put yourself through right now, the more benefit you're going to get. So the first one, I just had my foot draped across that foam roller and I just flick my foot, rotate it in each direction five times. Here, I'm putting my other leg on top to put a little bit more pressure on that and I'm raising my butt off the ground to get a lot more pressure on that calf. Now, if you have habitually tight calves, you want to get aggressive with this. I mean, don't shy away from it, really dig into it. Because again, the more acute discomfort we can put ourselves through, the more relief and the more benefit we're gonna get. Now, if you are feeling particularly squirrely, find that lacrosse ball, put it on top of your foam roller, and then put your other leg on top of that so that the foam roller doesn't roll away. And then same thing, flick your foot as hard as you can five times and then rotate it in each direction five times. So I want you to go ahead and figure out which one of these smashes is going to be appropriate for you. And I want you to do two minutes on each calf. Go ahead and figure out which one's going to work. Pause the video. Smash out those calves. Very good, guys. All right, way to smash out those calves. Let's go ahead and get our shins now. So this part of your leg, if it doesn't work properly, it's going to prevent you from getting into a good squat, which is going to end up in all the wrong places. So this is called the bone saw. Now, option one, I didn't have any weight on that shin. I literally just had the other leg out there to support, and I was just trying to roll it out. This option two, I've got both legs up there, and I'm trying to put a little bit more pressure on it. Option three, you get as much of your body weight on that shin as you can and just wail on it. It's not gonna be comfortable. Just know that it's going to offer benefits. Now, as you're doing these rolls, whatever option you end up doing, be sure that you're not directly on the shin bone. You're gonna be off to the side a little bit, just like I showed you at the beginning. Now, if you really wanna get aggressive, get that lacrosse ball, again, off to the side just a little bit, not directly on the shin, and smash it out this way. Probably option one is gonna be enough if you're going at it this way. Okay, I want you guys to pause the video, do two minutes on each side. Go. This next one's called the knee gap, and you need to know where these tendons are. This is your lateral tendon right there on the side. This is your medial tendon. You need to know where these are at in order to do this knee gap the right way. Again, there's the lateral tendon, there's the medial tendon. So grab your lacrosse ball, and you're going to start off on the medial tendon. See where I just pointed? Put that lacrosse ball right on top of that tendon. Close your leg around that lacrosse ball. I mean, really shove that thing into the back of your knee. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your foot down and you're gonna shove your knee as far forward as you can. So we're working on this squat mobility, but we're also smashing out our calf, our hamstring, and we're increasing the space between our knee. You might need to reset it a few times and you might even need to hold it in place if you're really sweaty. So I want you guys to go ahead and do one minute on each leg. Go ahead and pause the video, knock this out, and then we'll get the other side. 
Okay, so a knee gap for the lateral tendon. Find that tendon and then put that lacrosse ball right on top of the tendon. Now this one, you're gonna do the same exact thing. Just close that leg around that lacrosse ball and same thing, try to push that knee as far forward as you can. This one is definitely liable to slip out, so be sure to hold it in place. Go ahead and get one minute on each side for this as well. Pause the video, get it. Okay, full disclosure, I lied to you guys. This one's above the knee, but it's called a kneeling kettlebell stretch, and it's really helpful to get your knee and your hip and everything else to work the right way. So all I'm doing is holding that kettlebell so that my midline is having to work and stay activated. And I'm just trying to push my knee as far forward as I can. And I wanna make sure that as I'm pushing my knee forward, you can see it better from the side, I'm just trying to push my knee the same direction that my toe is pointing. I don't want my knee to cave inwards as I'm doing this kneeling kettlebell stretch. And also you can see that my back is nice and flat. So what I mean by that is when you're letting your knee cave in, it's gonna look like that. And we don't want that to happen because that's not going to force any good stretches. It's just gonna promote bad movement patterns. So pause the video and do two minutes on each side. Just rock forward, rock backwards. Okay, those are all the stretches that we're gonna do. Now we need to start activating the lower part of our leg to make sure that when we squat, we're doing it the right way. Now this is called a short foot. That's me grabbing the ground with my foot. That's me not doing anything. Me grabbing the ground, me not doing anything. Now this is extremely important. Watch what my shin does as I grab the ground. Boom, the whole thing rotates. And if my leg can't rotate like that, it's gonna be very difficult for me to get into a pain-free squat. So you wanna be sure that your foot can get into what's called, this is straight from the yogis. We've actually gone over this in one of the other videos, called a short foot. So I want you guys to go ahead and grab the ground with your foot, Relax, grab the ground with your foot, and I want you to do that for two minutes on each side. Go ahead and pause the video and do that isometric short foot. Full disclosure, this next one's a little awkward. It's called the donkey squat, but it is phenomenal in helping your body learn how to squat the right way. You grab the arch of your foot, you do that short foot, and then you drop your bottom into that squat. It's both going to stretch out your shins, your calves, your ankles, but it's also going to help you get your body used to getting your hips down. And when you're at the very bottom, you wanna to try to straighten up your chest. So you're just going to bring your butt up, bring it back down, go and do this for two minutes. If you're in a public place, maybe make sure that your butt is facing the wall. Go ahead and pause the video, do two minutes of donkey squats. All right, now we know that donkey squats are your favorite thing ever. Let's go ahead and try to put all these pieces together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called an integration. We're going to try to do as many squats as possible till we find technical failure. So right now I'm showing you all the good squats. My feet are grabbing the ground, my knees are going the same direction that my toes are pointing, my back is flat, and everything is staying very engaged very controlled. I'm also getting my hip crease below my knee. You may not be able to do that right now. Just do the best that you can and make sure that your feet are flat, abs are tight, and your back is straight. Those are the big take homes for right now. So I want you to go ahead and do as many technically sound squats as possible. And I want you to stop whenever you get to technical failure. So what does technical failure look like? Well, I'm very glad you asked. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of them. One of the more common mistakes people make is as they squat down, they let their chest completely come undone. So this is going to really get you in trouble, especially if you're loading a squat, which by the way, you shouldn't load a squat if you're doing this. You wanna make sure that you squared away body weight first. Now the next one is called a butt wink right there. What happens is my abs come undone or my adductors are too tight. At any rate, my midline is coming undone and it allows my butt to get that scoop under effect. We don't want that. Another mistake that people make is they have this shift as they go down. Now you saw me do that at the beginning of the squat sit, but I was intentionally doing that at the bottom to try to find my tight spots. If you're doing this and you can't stop it, that's no good. The next one is, are your knees caving in? Now, this could be because perhaps our butt cheeks aren't working the right way, but since we're focusing on everything happening from the knee down, let me show you what typically happens when your knees cave in like this. It's usually because this is what it's supposed to look like. You see, I'm holding the ground with that short foot. That's what we want it to look like. It forces my knees to go off to the side. It's very healthy, very strong. If my feet, bah, my feet collapse, that's no good. That's going to cause your knees, boom, 
to cave in just like that. We don't want that to happen, guys. You wanna make sure you're holding that short foot the entire time. So don't let your knees cave in. That's gonna wind up in your knees and your lower back. So don't let it happen. Another common mistake is people let their toes do all the work. You don't want your heels to pop up off the ground. You want those to stay very, very flat. Obviously, if our feet aren't flat, we can't hold a short foot. So I want you guys to go ahead and do as many body weight squats as you can until you reach technical failure. So go ahead and pause the video, take your time, don't rush this, make sure that you're being as intentional as possible. Pause it, do it. All right, we have come to the end, guys. We've done all of our stretches, we've done our activations, and we've done our integration. Now let's get back into that squat sit and let's see if we feel better, same, or worse. Hunt around, see if those same spots that you felt at the beginning feel tight or if they feel better. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it. We put out new content every Thursday at 5.30 a.m. Be sure to hit the like button if this helped you. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what we're throwing down. And be sure to share this information with a friend who may need it. You guys have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.